Hello, everybody. This is Gerald Salenti. Happy New Year's. And uh, we're honored in this new year to celebrate it with Judge Andrew Napolitano, a man of wisdom, courage, strength, creativity, passion, and honor. Things that are gone in most of uh, the world today, particularly in the political system. And this is a man, of course, I want to see uh, right at the top running in the uh, United States 2024 elections. Judge, thanks for being on today. Right, Gerald, it's a pleasure to be with you and a belated Happy New Year to you as well. Yeah. You know, Judge, you, know, you wrote this article that's coming out, The Government That Assaults Liberty. And you go on to talk about the, you know, the NSA and the... Um, the, the one, the drug one, the, uh, what is that? DEA. Yeah. You know, and I'm thinking, you know, we're going to go into the article, but what, w tell me the trillions of dollars we've spent over the decades for these surveillance agencies, in quote, intelligence, which is an oxymoron to call them intelligence agencies, Tell me the great things that they've accomplished since they've been created. Nothing. Nothing. 9-11, we, we have the most extensive, sophisticated, but by, by the spying community standards, network of spies throughout the world. And 9-11 just happened right on their watch. Nothing. They haven't kept us safe and they haven't kept us free. They haven't preserved our liberty, our lives, or our property. They've just taken hundreds of billions a year. The budget is secret, contrary to the Constitution, which says no money shall be spent from the federal treasury unless it's recorded in a public journal. Um, so they've taken our wealth. They've taken our liberty because now they use our, I'm holding up my, my cell phone. They use our cell phones to track us, to listen to us, and to download what's in here, which is what the uh, article uh, is about. They take our property, they take uh, our liberty, and they don't protect our lives. So they haven't accomplished anything. Could you uh, imagine? They bully, Congress, they bully Congress into voting continued budgets. Uh, they bully the president. They obviously have dirt on this president, as they have had on his uh, predecessors, and they always get their way. You know, this is, tell, tell, you know, what you were mentioning about, you know, the, by the way, you know, I don't carry a cell phone. I'm probably one of the only guys left in the world. That Tell me happen. about it when I'm trying to reach you. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I, got a, I have an old flip phone that I hardly know how to use. But, you know, you wrote this article about how, you know, they're, they're, they're spying on us and, and going into our cell phones and our computers. And they're right in front of everybody's eyes. And all they do is they, they change a word or a name of something and they just keep on doing it. So tell us more Correct. about it. All right. So uh, in the Trump administration, probably without Trump's personal knowledge, but with the knowledge of his uh, appointee to run the FBI, Chris Ray, the FBI purchased something called zero click software. Zero click means you don't need to trick the person to clicking onto a link in order to get into their uh, computer. Uh, you just need their coordinates and you get into the computer. What do you get? You can download everything that's in there. Well, to Biden's credit, when he learned that the FBI had this and was using it, he told them to stop using it. And he told the uh, Secretary of Commerce to ban Americans from purchasing anything made by this Israeli uh, company. What did the intelligence community do? They found another Israeli company that manufactured a nearly identical product, and they started uh, buying that. Question, why didn't Biden, instead of stopping them from purchasing a particular piece of software, instead stop them from spying on Americans without a search warrant? Congressman Adam Schiff, Senator Ron Wyden, two lefties, one in the House, one in the Senate, but like a, some lefties, faithful on civil liberties, exposed all of this. They attempted to get the Congress to prohibit the American Intelligence Committee from using this. Congress wouldn't go along with it. 
The right. most they could get out of Congress was, let's let the director of national intelligence decide. Well, what is she going to do? She's going to let them buy whatever toys they want. Why didn't the Congress prohibit spying on Americans without warrants? The answer to both of these questions is the same, because the intelligence community has dirt on Joe Biden and dirt on enough members of Congress that the Congress and the president wouldn't dare defy the intelligence community. It will not restrain them, and it will give them ever-increasing budgets to buy whatever toys they want. You asked me earlier, have they accomplished anything? No. 9-11, George W. Bush, on your watch, your 60,000 uh, spies did not keep us safe. This is terrible what's going on here. And, and again, you know, you know they're, they're spying on us. Correct. On we the Correct. people. Jim, you, take, you take a trip to Italy. I go to Italy every summer. Thanks be to God I'm able to do that. You like going to Europe. These uh, intelligence communities take the position that when Americans are overseas, the Fourth Amendment doesn't even apply. That they can just download whatever they want from your conversations and your communications. Now, the Supreme Court has rejected this argument that the Fourth Amendment only applies in the US since the FDR era. The Supreme Court has said wherever the government goes, the Constitution, <clears throat> excuse me, the Constitution goes with it. But yet, DEA, FBI, NSA, of both uh, under presidents of both political parties, Republicans and Democrats, continue to make the same argument. Outside the US, we can do whatever we want. We're just waiting for Americans uh, to go outside the US so we can spy on them with abandon. That's where we are today. The American public needs to know this. They don't always like what I write, but they need to know what the government is up to, what the government is doing with their money and, and their liberty in their names. Well, you just said the American public needs to know this. You go to CNN, the Cartoon News Network, and and I you know I go to all these sites every day to see what their what their news is. You know, some guy that plays an, an actor that got hit by a snowplow is is the major story. Yeah, I don't even know who this guy is, and so what? You know, what do I care? Yeah, it's terrible. He got hit by a snowplow. What what the hell are you telling me this stuff for? This is not news. Oh, Gerald, you're a day behind. The big news this morning is that AOC, the hard left Democrat progressive from Brooklyn, New York, and Paul Gosar, the libertarian conservative Republican from Arizona, sat next to each other in the House chamber yesterday and spoke civilly to each other. That's yeah. what the big news is this morning. Oh. What is wrong with you and me that we don't know this? Wow. This is crazy. I'm shocked. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we're about to start World War III in Ukraine, and the and every one of the networks is devoted to who sat next to whom yesterday during the Kevin McCarthy vote and who was making nice, nice to whom. It's ridiculous. So, that, so that's what I'm saying. When you're saying that the public needs, the public, they're gone. They're dead. They're dumb. They're finished. All the news is this a guy, a, a, a guy that knew how to cook, kick, kick a football really good died. You know, you know, oh, yeah, so what? You know, do we, my, my, you know, uh, this, what, what they're doing, they have brainwashed the people so much, they're brain dead. They're brain dead. And look what the society has become. You know, again, one of the top trends, they, you know, you ready? This is like one of the top trends that, um, yeah. Overalls, I'm not making this, I'm not making this up. This is from Yahoo by Robin Moreno. We just came out with our top trends for 2023. Here it is. Overalls are trending for 2023. And we found 17 actually wearable styles. Overalls, you're dressing like shit. <laughs> oh, look at your slobs. I like when they wear those mini dresses. You got it? Oh, no, we can't fit in those mini dresses anymore because 40, 
2% of Americans are obese. Look what's going on with this country. And like you said, hey, how about the Ukraine war that they keep ramping and ramping and ramping up? Yesterday, or, or the other day, they had this um, Sweden met with, um, where is it here? Here. Sweden turns to France as it looks to buy two nuclear reactors. Right? You read the story. I'm reading the story. And then at the very end, the two leaders reaffirm Russia's determination. Uh, excuse me. The two leaders reaffirmed. Your, this is from uh, DW, the, uh, the uh, German news article. The two leaders from S Sweden and France reaffirm Europe's determination to support Ukraine in the 10th month of the Russian offensive as winter sets in. You ready for this? Quote, the Ukrainians need our support more than ever, said Emmanuel Macron, the little cut son, the arrogant little Rothschilds boy, that's who he worked for before he became uh, president of France, an arrogant little nothing of a clown. You want to go support him, little boy? Put on your drag and go fight. Oh, I, I couldn't fight my way out of a paper bag. Anyway, it gets better. Quote, the victory of Ukraine is existential for Europe. You ready? And for the whole world, said Sweden's clown, Ulf Christofson. Did you know the judge that uh, Ukraine's ex is, ex is existential for Europe and for the whole world? Gerald, it's they the are laying. They, they care about laying. it down in, in Bolivia. They care down in, in Ghana, Somalia. Oh, they care. The whole world, the whole world is on the edge because of Ukraine. Who the hell are you talking to? They're, they're laying the groundwork. For World War III, they're they're trying to acclimate the public to the entry of ground troops into Ukraine because they, like my CIA friend uh, who comes on uh, judging freedom, want to get rid of Vladimir Putin, and they believe that this is the means uh, to do it. They want to search the world looking for monsters to slay. They don't realize that when America does that, it doesn't bring liberty, no. it doesn't bring peace, it brings violence and destruction. You ready for this one? Another arrogant boy, this guy, Jen Stoltenberg, the uh, NATO head over there. Right. Quote, it may sound like a paradox, but military support for Ukraine, you ready, is the fastest way to peace. <laughs> It not only sounds like a paradox, it's an oxymoron. I mean, without getting too into the grammatical uh, weeds, this is like, let's kill for peace. Yeah, perfectly said. Let's kill for peace. Let's kill for peace. Then he goes on to say, we know that most wars end at the negotiation table, probably this war too, but we know that Ukraine, Ukraine can achieve in this, these negotiations depends inextricably on the military situation. For the, for the artillery, we need an enormous amount of ammunition. We need spare parts. We need maintenance. This is a huge undertaking. We need to ramp up production. And that is exactly what NATO allies are doing. Wow. And Raytheon can't make this stuff fast enough. And you see the stocks of Raytheon and Lockheed Martin? Way up. No. Way no, up. No, no surprise. I so mean, 30, years ago, to... 30 years ago, there were 51 major defense contractors. Now there's five. Five. And you don't did that? <clears throat> Wrote about it in my book, Trends 2000, <clears throat> back in 1996, Bill Clinton. Yeah, that's when it happened. Yep. 
Yep. Mm. Lockheed Martin, merging all the companies. Yep. Right. And, and that's right. why they pay that little clown, that arrogant little boy that every time he got caught with his pants down, bombs away over Baghdad. What do you think they pay him? $300 and 300000 $300,000 to speak for one hour. Are you talking about Bill Clinton? Yes. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know if he still does that anymore, but he was, he was doing yeah, he, that. He for was a while. doing it. Yeah. Yes. That's payoff. You can hear this guy bullshit for free all day long. Correct. Correct. So then, then when we're looking at this and how they're leading us into war, you you had said, and I, I followed up on this. Well, first of all, they got, um, they're now talking more and more about nuclear war. A nuclear attack would most likely target one of these six cities. <laughs> this is, this is, this was on, um, I believe it was from um, uh, Business Insider. For everyday citizens, FEMA, which is the Federal Emergency uh, uh, Management Agency that can't manage anything, a bunch of little bureaucratic clowns, you ready? Has some simple advice. <clears throat> Get inside, stay inside, and stay tuned. We need the government to tell us that. You're, you're dust. Let's stay inside, stay tuned. Right. This is the, they're preparing us for war. And yes. you said, I mean, I said to you one day, one of our podcasts about, you know, they tell you that World War I started when they assassinated the Archduke Ferdinand in Sarajevo. Oh, oh, and then the other one was um, World War II began when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. And you said. That's the public school, government school version of how these things started. And unfortunately, that's what most Americans who are the product of public slash government schools, they hate when you call it government schools, believe. Now, how did, what led up to the bombing of Pearl Harbor? The American uh, manipulation and attempted starvation of the Japanese fleet uh, in the Pacific. Absolutely, totally directed, manipulated uh, by uh, FDR. We know this from the secret uh, telegrams of Henry Stimson, his secretary of war, which of course weren't released until the war was over and uh, FDR uh, was dead. On December 6th, 1941, 80% of Americans wanted nothing to do with the European war. On December 8th, 1941, it had flipped. 80% of Americans wanted us to enter World War II and FDR had accomplished his goal, which was to change public opinion so he could help out his second cousin, another murdering thug called Winston Churchill, uh, fight uh, in Great Britain. Was Hitler good? No, Hitler was one of the great horrific monsters of all time, uh, but FDR, manipulated Japanese to destroy and kill 2,700 American boys while they slept in their ships docked in Pearl Harbor so he could change American public opinion. You are not supposed to say what I just said. If I were still on Fox News and said this, I'd be off for a week. But it is now well-accepted historiography, the history of history, that these Facts have been suppressed until recent times. And most people don't know about this. Correct. So now Correct. when you said this, I went online and I, I put that in there. You know, why did uh, the Japanese bomb Pearl Harbor? And it came up in that, that site history. And this day in history, July 26th, 1941. United States freezes Japanese assets. On July 26, 1941, President Franklin D. Roosevelt, you ready? Seizes all Japanese assets in the United States. You know why? In retaliation for Japanese occupation of French Indochina. <laughs> oh, I said French Indochina. Oh, you mean when the French took over Vietnam? 
when the French took over Laos, when the French took over Cambodia? Why, how dare the Japanese go in there when it's the French colonized it? You know, when my buddy and I went to Vietnam in 1996, like one of the first Americans in there after the war, they, you know, they wouldn't allow people in there. We went to the museum, one of the museums in, in Saigon. They had the guillotines there from when the French were there chopping off people's heads. They, mm. So I'm saying to myself, what the hell do I care as an American what the Japanese are doing in French Indochina? Mm. Oh, they're on their way into China. That's not none of my business. That's why Correct. he did this. He stole Correct. their money. And then it goes on to say, Tokyo decided to strengthen its terms of its invasion in China by moving through Southeast Asia. And it goes on that um, uh, the occupation in Indochina, Japan followed up by occupying, you ready? Cameron Naval Base, 800 miles from the Philippines where Americans had troops and the British base at Singapore. Hey, what are the Americans doing over in the Philippines? And what the hell are the British doing in Singapore? There you go. Stealing, uh, stealing property, spreading violence, crushing liberty. President Roosevelt swung into action by freezing all Japanese assets in America, Britain, and Dutch East Indies followed. Oh, Dutch East Indies? You mean the people is a place called Holland or whatever, and they used to steal land all over the place as well? Yeah. Things don't uh, change, Gerald. We're going through the same thing uh, right now. What is the United States going to want, and what is NATO going to want in return uh, in Ukraine? The result, telling Japanese... People, telling people how to live. Japan lost access to three-fourths of its overseas trade and 88% of its imported oil. Can't understand why they bombed Pearl Harbor. Right. Right. This Again, this is from history today. You will never hear that discussed in a government school <clears throat> ever. Nope. Maybe and in so some that's private where we're at today. Some, pardon me? That's where we're at today. They're lying us into war. There's going to be a false flag event and people have no idea. They have no idea. Again, we know who, what, I'm so concerned. I wonder how Johnny Depp and Amber Heard are doing. I never heard of her. <laughs> I, every goddamn day they're talking about this for how months, months, months. Right. Right. All right, my friend. Well, on a high note, we have to change this government, and this is the year to do it. It might and very that, well be. And I, you're the man that can help lead the charge. So thank you so much for being on. Thank you for all that you do. And we'll see you next week. Thank you, Gerald. All the best. Ciao, ciao.